Hello, and welcome to video three of the series, Best Practices Building Generative AI Applications on AWS. My name is Dan Stair. I am an analytics specialist solutions architect, and this video series was built in collaboration with my coworkers, Harsha Tadaparty and Felix Huthmacher. Our objective is to provide a one-stop shop for you to learn the essentials of building generative AI applications on AWS. In our role, we assist many customers of different sizes in realizing their vision for generative AI applications. Since the technology is so new, we have seen many customers asking AWS solutions architects for guidance in building generative AI applications. This is video three in our series. In videos one and two, we provided an overview of how to choose the right large language model for your use case. In this video, we will be covering how to evaluate an LLM system involving an LLM, an embedding model, and a vector store, and we will be covering appropriate metrics for each. We advocate a metrics-driven approach to LLM system evaluation. There are many advantages of metrics-driven development. Just as automated testing in software development provides objectivity, speed, and reduces time to market, Gen AI metrics serve a similar function. First, they are an objective approach. Given a ground truth and, des and test data, we only change one variable at a time. For example, chunk size, embedding model, or large language model. Metrics can change as business needs change. For example, if a new product requires extremely low likelihood of toxicity. And you can increase speed and time to market. You can run an automated test suite much faster than doing manual testing. And this automated test suite's coverage can be more comprehensive. Now, let's take a look at precisely which metrics we will be relying on. All of the LLM system evaluation metrics we will be covering measure four core elements in relation to one another. These core elements are the question, the answer, the context, and the ground truth. On the left side, we list generation metrics, and on the right side, we will list our retrieval metrics. First, looking at generation metrics, we have answer relevance which looks at if the answer is relevant to the question asked. We will also look at faithfulness, which looks at the answer to see if it accurately reflects the context given. On the right side, we have our retrieval metrics, including context precision, which looks at if the context is relevant to the question, and context recall, which looks at based on gr the ground truth answer, can the system retrieve most of the relevant context available? Also, not shown on this slide, we have our end-to-end -end metrics, including answer correctness, which compares the answer to the ground truth answer. This provides a conceptual overview of generative AI metrics. Now, let's look at an example of a RAG system on AWS. In this diagram, we have an open search serverless vector store, and we use Bedrock for our foundation model and embedding model. To walk you through the flow of this RAG system, first a user asks a question. That question is sent to open search. Open search then calls the Bedrock embedding model API to convert the question into a vector. Then it takes that vector and does a search, for example, using a K nearest neighbor algorithm or approximate nearest neighbor, neighbor algorithm. That search returns results. Those results are converted from vector into text again via bedrock. And then a large language model will process those words, uh, which are referred to as the context and return an end answer to the user. So let's say the user asks a question, what was the weather yesterday? That question will be sent to open search. It will be vectorized. Search results are returned. 
in this example, the context given is it was 78 degrees and the sky was blue. And the large language model summarizes that context and provides an answer. It was a sunny 78 degrees. Let's take a deeper look at our generation metrics. Our generation metrics are faithfulness and answer relevance. To go through this methodology behind faithfulness, first, we will separate out distinct claims in a given answer. Then we will assess how many claims are valid. Then we compare each claim to the context given. And then we calculate faithfulness, which is the number of valid claims divided by the number of total claims. Going over the methodology for answer relevance, first, we will generate artificial questions based on the ground truth answer. Then we will calculate the similarity of the given answer to the ground truth answer using cosine similarity. And finally, we will average the similarity of the three cosine similarities and return a similarity score, typically between zero and one. It will help to look at a couple of examples here, starting with faithfulness. The given an let's take the given answer. It is 78 degrees and sunny. We'll separate that out into two claims. One, it is 78 degrees. Two, it is sunny. Now we'll compare each claim to the context given. The context given here is it is a cloudy 78 degrees. So the faithfulness in this example is one valid claim divided by two total claims, or 0 0.5. Now let's look at an example for our other generation metric, answer relevance. First, we generate artificial questions based on the ground truth answer. Then we calculate the mean cosine similarity of the generated questions compared to the actual question. In this example, our cosine similarities are 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0 0.8. Finally, we average the cosine similarities to deliver a score for answer relevance. For this example, our, the score we are delivering is 0 0.7. Now that we have covered generation metrics, let's look at our retrieval metrics. Context precision looks at the given question, the ground truth answer, and the context, and determines if the right contexts are present and are ranked by relevance. So for context precision, a high score means that the system is retrieving mostly relevant information. Context recall takes the number of sentences in the ground truth answer, which can be attributed to the context, and then divides by the total number of sentences in the ground truth answer. So a high score means that the system can retrieve most of the relevant information available. There are trade-offs between achieving high precision and achieving high recall. To illustrate these, let's look at an example. In our example, we have a question. What information is in our address book for Jane Doe? We also have a ground truth answer. Jane Doe lives at 123 Any Street, Anytown, USA, and her phone number is 555 -0100. Now let's look at two different answers, one for high precision and one for high recall. Example answer one pulls one result just for address. This is a high, and, and that's a correct address for Jane Doe. This is a high precision answer because all of the results that were pulled were relevant, but it's a low recall answer because we're not capturing all of the relevant facts that are in our data store that relate to Jane Doe. Example answer two is the opposite. We pull one result for address, one result for phone, those are both for Jane Doe, and then we pull one result for John Doe's address, so we pull an irrelevant address. So this is lower precision because we've pulled an irrelevant address, but it's high recall because we have captured all of the relevant information for Jane Doe that exists in our database. So you can see, depending on your goals, you might want to optimize for one or the other. Now that we've covered our generation and retrieval metrics, let's look at our end-to-end -end metric. 
which is answer correctness. The high level idea behind answer correctness is we will compare the ground truth answer to the given answer and score the result. First, we will calculate semantic similarity. To do this, we convert the given answer to a vector and compare to the ground truth answer vector using cosine similarity. To take an example, if the question is, what is the tallest mountain in the United States? And the given answer is, Denali is the tallest mountain in the United States. We would compare the vector form of that given answer to the ground truth answer. At 20,310 feet, Denali in Alaska is the tallest mountain in the United States. Then we would calculate factual similarity by comparing the ground truth answer and the given answer. We would assess each statement in the answers as a true positive, false positive, or false negative, and use that to calculate precision, recall, and F1 score. In our example, we have a true positive statement. Denali is the tallest mountain in the United States. But we also have two false negative statements because only the ground truth answer gives an altitude and a state. Finally, once we've calculated semantic similarity and factual similarity, we return a weighted score. To read more about the Ragus implementation of any of the metrics we have covered, please refer to the documentation listed here. In conclusion, we have covered the metrics needed to evaluate an LLM system end-to-end. -end. The generation metrics, answer relevance and faithfulness, the retrieval metrics, contract precision and context recall, and the end-to-end -end metric, answer correctness. Now I'm going to hand it over to Felix to go over the hands-on implementation.